So I'd like to start off today by getting a show of hands. How many of you out there suffer, at least from time to time, from headaches? Get that pain, tension in your head, right? And how many of you are like me and essentially just take some aspirin or some pain reliever and try to get it to go away and don't put another thought towards it? Well, I know that's what I tend to do. I'm guilty of that. But what I don't always consider is what actually is the root of that headache. Because if I can figure that out, then I can get rid of the symptoms once and for all. Perhaps I have some kind of a food allergy or I'm not drinking enough water that day. But the bottom line is that so long as I only focus on the pain, the symptom, I'm never gonna actually fix what truly is ailing me. Now this might seem like a weird way to start my talk today, but in fact, it's a great segue to introduce my topic. Because my friends, I must say that I believe we are making a very similar mistake when it comes to our efforts to rescue our nation from being sealed with a socialist fate. You see, we spend so much time on electing politicians, on walking the precincts and cleaning out the brochures. But what if, similar to that headache that you receive when you don't get a proper night's sleep, politicians are merely the reaction or the symptom to whatever it is that truly is ailing us? Now, if that were the case, wouldn't you agree that focusing on the symptoms alone would never get us to the results that we seek, rather that we desperately need as a nation? So what is the actual root of the problem that has led us closer and closer toward the Leviathan government that we see today? Well, my friends, I stand here before you today and I tell you that the guilty party that I speak of is none other then we the people, the American public, the citizens of our nation. And I believe it is incumbent upon all liberty activists to get us back on the right track. But to be clear, Americans are at fault for making two particular kinds of mistakes. The first is to remain ignorant on nefarious or corrupt government actions. Now this allows elected officials to go on spending and doing things that otherwise would not be condoned. Now the second, and what I consider the most harmful, is that they actually encourage growth in government. They encourage the government to get bigger. So there are two essential public opinions that are big, massive public, public opinions that I believe are leading us on the path to disaster. I'm gonna show you a couple of surveys and polls today to back that claim up. Now essentially, the first big problem that Americans make is to have this belief that somehow, outside of upholding laws, government can magically step into an economy, intervene in order to fix or improve that economy. And this line of thinking, of course, is what leads us to the bailouts, the undue and burdensome regulations on business, and of course, the increase in agencies and government bureaus. So I'd like to show you a couple areas of examples today. So, rather than encouraging our government to stay out of intervening within the economy. What we instead find from this 2008, September 2008 Gallup poll is that 74% of Americans believe that the economy would get worse if Congress did not act. This was a month before the first bailout passed by George Bush. Now the second Gallup poll conducted the same exact month, September 2008, found that 87% of Americans believe that without a financial plan by Congress to fix the problem, we would either have an economic depression, a severe prolonged recession, or would definitely have major economic problems, 87%. And now, rather than encourage our politicians to want to lessen burdensome regulations on businesses, what we find from this ABC News Washington poll, which came out in 2010, is that 65% of the public supports stricter federal regulations on credit card industries and financial institutions, and essentially how they conduct their business. Another six in 10 said that they encourage, they encourage increased regulations on banks so that they cannot pass overdraft fees unless it's commensurate with how much it actually costs the bank from getting that particular overdraft fee. So now going back to even June 2008, we can see that rather than encourage government to stay out of meddling in private business by using legislation to tell them how to run their company, we find from a June 2008 GFK Roper poll that 73% of Americans agree or strongly agree 
that credit card companies need to be more regulated more closely by government. So that's the first problem that Americans make, the first mistake. The second, and there are more, but I'm focusing on two today, is that they encourage the spending uh, on programs and government services that we complain about that is actually leading us to financial ruin today. They encourage those things. So rather than encourage a move toward private Social Security and Medicare accounts or the eventual phasing out of those accounts as proposed by Mr. Armstrong over here, rather than proposing that, what we find from this 2011 ABC Washington Post poll from this April of this year, that 65% of Americans want Medicare to stay as it is today, rather than go into some private retirement accounts or vouchers as Republicans uh, suggest, which is already pointed out is not quite the total solution, but I would suggest it's at least talking about doing something differently. Now, um, oh, in addition to that, another poll that month from a different polling source found that 70% of self-described Tea Party activists were opposed to any cuts in Medicaid or Medicare whatsoever to decrease the national debt. Now, <clears throat> lastly, rather than try to fix our healthcare system by moving towards a complete free market in healthcare, which would lower costs, create competition, and allow better services for everybody. Rather than encourage that, we find from this March 2010 Bloomberg poll that 64% of people believe that healthcare, affordable healthcare, is something that government should ensure that everyone has access to. <laughs> we also find that more than 50% of respondents wanted any increases in the cost to Medicare recipients or any attempts to increase the retirement age to be completely off the table. Okay, so these are the surveys and the polls that I want to point out to you today. Now, it may be difficult to believe that the American people actually got us into the mess that we're in today, especially when you look at articles and polls that show an increased demand for limited government. But if you look closer, you find that very few are actually willing to cut out the supposed freebies or safety nets that they feel government is there to provide. So we cannot go on believing that simply electing the right politician is going to solve all of our problems. Because as we can see from these polls and surveys, the ideal candidate, as we see them, is unelectable in America today. So I'd like to end today with a quote from the free market economist Milton Friedman. Friedman stated, quote, you don't need to change Congress. People have a big misperception in this way. They think the way you solve things is by electing the right people. Well, it's nice to elect the right people, but that's not the way you solve things. The way you solve things is by making it politically profitable for the wrong people to do the right things. Mm. So what Dr. Freeman is pointing out here, my friends, is that we need to get to the point where a politician only stands for re-election when they prove that they have been able to diminish the size and scope of government, when they have shown that they have cut spending and they have uh, lower taxes across the board. At least this is what I strive for. This is the vision that I see for the future, and I refuse to settle for anything less. Because remember, our goal is to spend time with our family and friends, to work on us, to enjoy our lives, not to spend all of our time and energy on politics. And I truly believe that if we can get to the point where we're electing candidates like this, that we will be that much closer to that kind of reality. Thank you.